Right, I have some excellent new tools to show you today which I'm going to be using on my Chinese mini lathe and my MyFed ML7. Um, the first is this um, professional drill chuck, it's a keyless chuck and I have actually got one of these for my MyFed ML7 so I'm going to be particularly using this one on the Chinese mini lathe. And it is a professional drill chuck, just like they say on the box. When you actually pick it up, you can actually see that by the quality. And the movement is really smooth, and the grinding of the jaws is absolutely perfect. And it does actually have the ISO 9001 quality um, mark on the actual box. And when I choose um, keyless chucks I always choose this type because they're the most powerful keyless chucks on the market that I've uh, found in use. They hold the um, drills really tightly with um, quite minimal effort of tightening up but you have the Tommy bar holes there as well if you ever need them. Also what I like about this chuck, I've got a smaller one of these on the Chinese mini lathe at the moment but this one here holds 132 to 5 8 inch diameter drills so it goes up to about 16 millimeter in diameter which is a good size to hold. And when they say down to 132 diameter drills you can see there by the grind on the end of the jaws there that there's no gap whatsoever and they hold those really tiny drills absolutely perfectly. So this one has a JT3 tapered socket on the back here and it comes with the JT3 um, taper on the front of this arbor which is 2MT so it's ideal for both the MyFord and the Chinese mini lathe. And if you've just bought a Chinese mini lathe or you're new to machining on the mini lathe, when you get these um, arbors you want to actually cut the tang off the back here and maybe a little bit more of the taper and that will give you much more um, travel on the tailstock barrel movement. And you'll know exactly what I mean if you've ever tried to put one of these long two empty tapers in the Chinese mini lathe tailstock. You have to wind the barrel out quite a way before it will actually seat. And when you wind the um, tailstock barrel back, if it's not cut off, you'll find that it ejects the um, tool much quicker than if it was cut off and you actually gain quite a bit of movement and I'll show you exactly in a moment how much to actually take off of there to gain the maximum travel. And with a larger chuck like this um, obviously you have um, a longer chuck it's 88 millimeters from this face here to the end here then the um, taper length as well so you need that maximum amount of travel um, for doing drilling or whatever. The chuck is also 44 millimeters in diameter and it's made of high carbon steel. And the key parts are specially heat treated and quenched to increase durability. Next I have these um, drill bits from um, Drill Pro. These are drill and tap all in one and it's going to be very interesting to actually test these out. Um, they're actually meant for putting in a drill and drilling into things, um, plate, steel or whatever and actually doing the core diameter for the thread and the thread all in one go and I'm going to try those out on the lathe to see what they're like. And these ones are metric and they're HSS and you can buy them individually or in sets. And lastly I have this interesting turning tool here which is an SRACR 1212H06 and it takes these round carbide inserts and I think this will make a really good profile tool. So I'm going to be testing that one out and now I'm going to go out on the lathe and do the um, arbor and like I say test these tools out. Right, so on the mini lay, this is my usual chuck and MT2 setup I use, and you can see there that the um, arbor is much shorter than the one I'm about to put in. I found that when I actually put this one in, it doesn't seat at all. Um, so I'm going to cut that one off now, and I'm going to cut it off to the same length 
um, as the one I've already done and therefore I better have much more travel backwards on the barrel there before it ejects. So now all that I'm going to do is saw off um, 25 millimetre. Um, I was going to use my angle grinder but it's uh, later in the evening so um, I don't want to disturb the neighbours so I'll use a hacksaw. And it would have been better to leave the chuck off of the um, taper first but I've put it on there now and it's um, quite difficult to get them off again. So I'll just saw it off with that on there. And then just clean up the end on the disc sander. So after a bit of buffing it looks as good as new and that one will locate perfectly in the tailstock now. And you can see on the metric barrel scale here when I actually wind it back it will actually get to the zero before the tailstock ejects the 2MT taper. And it wouldn't do that if this taper was any longer. And this is the smaller chuck that I was using originally and this one's about six millimetre longer than this um, taper and I'll show you that difference on the tailstock. So that one's locked in there now and at six millimetre it will be ejected. So just remember if you're going to do that, that I took exactly 25mm off the end. And if you want to play it safe, you can actually take say 20mm off at first and then grind it back a bit more. And most of you that have got the Chinese mini lathe will know this already, but I do this for people that are new to the lathe or maybe just buying it, so that they can see why there isn't so much travel on their tailstock before the tool is ejected. And because the mini lathe is so small, gaining an extra 25mm makes all the difference on some jobs. So now I'm going to try one of these Drill Pro combination drill screw taps. Um, this is the 8mm times one25 and I've got a piece of angle aluminium in the um, vise here and it's three millimetre thick so I'm just going to just drill through that and see how it taps.
and a perfect thread. And that's actually a great tool for doing fast work if you're bolting together um, something like angle aluminium or angle iron. You could actually use those uh, drill combination taps to do many holes quickly, many threaded holes quickly. And I think that's a great little tool to have. And like I say, you can buy them individually or in sets. And now I've got a piece of angle iron set up in the vise there and I'm going to try the 6mm one in that. And obviously you have to hold the drill um, as square as possible so that the thread is square in the actual work. And when using those drill taps in angle iron or steel, it'd obviously be best to use some form of cutting oil or cutting compound for the actual thread. But you can see there how quick the tool is to actually just go straight through a piece of angle iron and do the thread in one go. It saves a lot of time and if you're bolting something together like shelving or whatever, these are great little tools to get. And I'm actually quite pleased at how square I can actually drill and tap that thread in one go like that. It may take a bit of a time to get that, but after a few holes, you'll actually get the knack. And when you use tools like this one here, you need to use a battery drill, a cordless drill like this one, that has good control over the trigger. So you can actually slow the um, drill tap down at the point that the thread takes hold of the work and goes in. If you go in too fast, you'll end up ripping the um, thread. So like I say, you want a drill that has very good control and you can actually slow it down as you go in. And you can actually use these combination drill taps on the lathe as well with care, the smaller ones at least. This is the 4mm one. And I'm going to centre the um, disc here. This is a, um, a Delrin disc and it's about 6 to 7mm thick. And I'll just centre it up. Incidentally, these chucks are absolutely brilliant to hold and tighten up very easily, like I said earlier. And now I'm going to start the lathe up and push it in on the tailstock until it picks up with a thread and then I'll go straight into reverse. And if you had a whole batch of those discs like that to do, that would actually cut out the use of the um, core drill first, so it cuts out one tool and speeds up the whole process. And like I said, it's the smaller ones that are excellent for this type of work. 
And when I say smaller ones, I only mean going up to about 6mm in diameter on the thread. It's not that there's anything wrong with at all, but after 6mm, anything larger than that, it becomes hard to actually push the tailstock in on the drill and pick up on the thread and to control the lathe at the same time. Plus, when you go into reverse with the larger drill taps, there's a tendency for the chuck to undo and the tap to actually spin in the jaws. So now, just before I finish, I'd just like to show you this tool here, which I'm going to use as a profile tool. It's got a round carbide insert, and obviously when um, one edge bit becomes worn you could actually undo that screw and turn it round a bit so you've got the full circle of the carbide and it is actually excellent for doing large o-ring grooves or profiles for pulley wheels or whatever And I think that's an absolutely excellent tool.